is enough to be able to turn a team fight so huge. And I mean, well, I always think of like Dota as a game of who initiates first, right? And the person who initiates has a huge advantage. And, you know, like Nullfire even reinforces that idea of like initiators having the power because, you know, if you if you can react to Nullfire because it has a projectile, and you can pop BKB to block it, but it's hard when you get initiated. <laughs> It, it is very difficult. Initiation is a huge part of the game. Uh, and now going to the draft, another huge aspect of the game. We have the first four bands out immediately. Uh, Viper Tiny for Marietta. And Johns Hopkins University is going to go for Abaddon Rasta. Uh, switching sides going into game two. We will have Johns Hopkins University on the Dire and Marietta on the Radiant. Now, you think we're going to see similar drafts? Or you think we're going to see them mix it up this game? Marietta um, is feeling similar good bands, that. But, uh, oh, there's the Huskar. Yeah, they you just know, added, you yeah, know Johns long. Hopkins University can't be going into this. Yes. They're going to be a little bit upset with having control and losing a game like that. Yeah, I feel like they probably knew they threw there. I feel like that was a big throw. We're talking about that uh, fight when they lost to Rax. That will take away the Shadow Fiend actually for themselves, which worked very well for Marietta last game. And yeah, there's Shadow Fiend Clockwork. Hello, Johns Hopkins University. That is a classic combination, a staple draft Ten start. If anyone is unfamiliar with this, Clockwork can kill Shadow Fiend early on, so it's great to deny him for the other team. But more importantly, for every last hit Shadow Fiend gets, he increases his damage. You can last hit Clockwork's cogs before the game even starts and go to lane with a maximum amount of Necromastery. I believe it is 12, or is that 12. the number it was nerfed from? Necromastery at 12. level 1 is 12 souls dealing 2 damage or adding 2 damage each, add, each adding 24 damage to Shadow Fiend before the game even starts. On the flip side, we're going to see an early Outworld Devour picked up, pick up by Marietta College. I guess they are very confident in their OD versus Shadow Fiend lane. OD is another lane dominator. He offers a save just like Tusk, so there's 2 saves on Marietta College's team. And OD is a hero that can snowball just like Shadow Fiend. Yeah, mid lane is getting picked out immediately. I mean, when you know who your opponent is going to be playing in mid lane, Shadow Fiend, obviously, you don't have as much risk picking that OD. And um, another thing that I see all the time when it comes to Clockwork and Shadow Fiend, they take uh, sometimes a little while getting out of their base, uh, trying to last hit those cogs. But mm -hmm. after that nerf, where he went Necromastery from 15 to 12, um, I don't think that's really the case anymore. Now, uh, after getting your maximum soul to 12, you'll need another cycle of Clockwork Cogs. I find they usually can get out over onto the Bounty Ruins in time. Definitely. It, that was the old strategy, is that if someone's going to go Clockwork Shadow Fiend, the easiest way to punish them is to try and go for all four Bounty Ruins, because you know they're not going to be there in time. However, yes, if they are quick, and if they even want to sacrifice, what, the 100 mana on Clockwork that's likely going to oh, regen, yeah. you can uh, deny the cogs on the way to the bounty room. Uh, I'm just double checking the mana cost, and yes, it is 50 mana at level 1 for cogs. Now, bans, Omni Knight Jakiro. Um, heroes that can fight in lane, they're a little bit difficult to kill. Uh, heroes that scale well. Heroes that uh, enable you to push uh, versus a Nyx and a Bristleback, two extremely Actually, very heroes. similar bans as last game, because uh, all these heroes, I think, were banned in the second phase of last game. At least I know Bristleback, Jakiro, and Omni Knight were. Mm -hmm. They, yes, and I love that the Huskar is being banned, although I would love to, I would love it more if Huskar was not banned, but instead picked. <laughs> uh, going into the second phase, we actually have the mid laners revealed and the position fours revealed. So it's likely a position five pick going to come out here from Johnson. There's the Wish Doctor. They are going to steal the support combo, putting it against the uh, Marietta. Wait, no. Now I'm confusing myself. No, you're right. You're right. Marietta. <laughs> oh, wait, no. You're right. Clockwork was over on Marietta. And they have which are, you're right. Um, they 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 did take no did John Hopkins no John Hopkins had this. There's the same yeah, combo. Yeah, John Hopkins is repeating. It's the same it. combo. Yeah. Now, why are they I'm... repeating it, goalie? What are the strengths of this apart from their control and their? Uh, I mean, they they're both like super murdery supports. You know, they 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 aren't defensive supports at all. They are like fully offensively geared supports that can. Uh, honestly just blow up anyone just by themselves mm -hmm. and as we were discussing the importance of the laning phase it is not uh, or it is uncommon to see uh, aggressive tri lanes however we saw one last game if uh, and and uh, johns hopkins university won it with those supports oh, so it was the same supports, the same supports, supports for both teams oh the comfort pick i love it well 
if the if this has taught us anything we know that johns hopkins university is going to do a fantastic job in the early game with these supports however yeah. marietta college has proven their ability to position well in order to soak up battery assault to to group up for battery assault to separate for cast um they uh, they did not allow Johns Hopkins University to get as many kills as I think Johns Hopkins want, but if it comes to a tri-lane versus tri-lane situation as it did in the last game, Johns Hopkins University has proven that they are ready to scrap, they know how to fight, they know how to get their knuckles a little bit bloody and they're not scared to do so. Really? Going into this game as well, they will have the Shadow Fiend with the extra souls. Oh, oh speaking of difficult names. Hello. God, I now. love this hero in the off lane. Oh god, you're disgusting, Goldie. Why do you <laughs> love this hero? Tell me I, I, what about this you like. I, I mean, you just it's so I don't know, it's so funny. You just run around and you get to bully the enemy uh, carry against the enemy trilane and they don't do anything to you because your things are healing you constantly and you just they never die and then you like turn into like a damage hose in the late game. It's just, just so much fun. I mean, that actually kind of fits my like playstyle because when I play offlane, I like playing Omni Knights. I like playing uh God, Abaddon, I, play, I like playing Enchantress. Can I, you know, I like... Hold on, can I get a new caster? I, this is just <laughs> absolutely revolting, hearing your hero pool. Ooh. 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 I, mean, I need to take a shower after reason, this game man. hearing you say that. <laughs> well, <laughs> well uh, just like the, laning, the importance of the laning phase, the importance of mid-game team fights, and that has been seen in Gyro's Rise. Now, yeah. Outworld Devour and Gyro, those heroes have some buttons to press. Uh, in the mid-game team fights, OD dropping the hammer, erasing people from the game, and Gyrocopter with the low cooldown, high damage output from his stun, from his rocket barrage, and from his ultimate ability, which he can use both to farm and to fight. Gyrocopter, what is his? Uh, uh, what's the big old cooldown? That's what it's called. Yeah. Now I also find when, of course, uh, John Hopkins is looking for their safe laner here. Um, I find a common counter I've been seeing recently in pro meta is the Radiant Morphling against that. Gyrocopter. Because it's a perfect like hero for Morphling to copy because you can pop the uh, your flak cannon, your yeah. uh, missile barrage, and your rocket, and then just turn back into Morphling and do your thing. Yeah, Morphling loves that, and if uh, that did not make complete Ten sense, if you do the flak cannon, you're going to keep it on Morphling. Radiant Morphling Ooh. will be doing the auto attacks with the flak cannon buff. Um, I'm excited to see this Enchantress, because Enchantress, to me, is a hit or miss hero. She snowballs yeah, out of control, or she feeds and can never recover. I definitely um, agree. And I would love to see what uh, Marietta is able to do for the Ten Johns Hopkins University remaining. Enchantress. I think Enchantress is fun to watch in lane. I don't think she's very fun Five to play against. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I'm excited for it. They have a lot of damage Nine output at Johns Hopkins eight. University, but not necessarily a frontliner as the game goes on. And there's another mid-game team fight from yeah. uh, Marietta College. Marietta's mid-game is going to be insane, and their lanes are not something to laugh at either. Yeah, completely different look from the last game here. They're Marietta. matching pace for face here for Johns Hopkins. Uh, Marietta is not taking this game late. Right. They are going to end this game easily before 40 minutes. I would be surprised. They would, they're going to be going for high ground before 30. Now, their tower hitting ability isn't too great. It's essentially Gyrocopter, yep. who's a low-range hero as well, so he's going to be in dangerous spots. Enchantress is a long-range hero. Uh, I'm scared. Marietta needs to win the fights, and I don't think they're going to have a problem winning the fights in the early game, but they need to win the fights to get high ground. They can't really siege, it feels like. OD, notoriously bad tower hitter because he needs his uh, his orb effect on his weapon to deal damage and it only works on non-magic new targets. Gyrocopter is a low range hero and Puck is not necessarily known for her high auto attack damage, it's her high spell damage. There's Luna. That is the late game secured hero. That feels like a hero to me that can carry this game, especially with the space that's going to be made from Enchantress. I wouldn't be surprised to see Shadow Fiend go on more of a hybrid space creator carry role rather than a space creator that we saw last game. Yeah. Luna really rounds this team out for me uh, very well. Although so this, uh, it's kind Marietta's of flip, lineup is still it? insane. But this time it's going to be Johns Hopkins who's going to be looking to take the game slightly later. Of course, not as late as a Spectre game. But, but even in the mid game, they're still very powerful. Yeah, of course, Luna can contribute quite a bit with the Eclipse. One of the uh, best uh, team fighting spells I saw in the early on. But 
Enchantress uh, shouldn't have too difficult of a time. Obviously, Lucent Beam, a high, um, a spammable high magic damage spell, is a great way to counter Enchantress. She hates magic damage, uh, but she does great against physical. Luna is a low range hero, and Enchantress is a high range hero. Enchantress also has high movement speed. Luna's high movement speed is not that big of a deal when it comes okay. to trade. What am I talking about? Enchantress fighting Luna. They're on the same team. I got that <laughs> off topic. Um, but so rather, Luna will be against the Puck in the off lane very likely, and. I wouldn't be surprised to ha see Luna actually not have too much of a problem in that lane. Although, uh, the off lanes are going to be very interesting. I think we should keep our eye. Here's an early smoke coming up from Marriott at their... Um, yeah, they know that uh, uh, yeah. Clockwork and Shadow Fiend aren't going to be there. And plus one, because Luna obviously needs to help with that as well. Right now, so far, eight souls on Shadow Fiend. They need two more rounds to get full souls on them. They might not do two more. They might just do one more. He can move the 11. And they're set up, Marietta is set up in John Hopkins University jungle. They have a Tusk, they have a Ward. I think it is unlikely that Johns Hopkins Johnson University will even to attempt go. to go for their top bounty rune. They didn't do it last game. I doubt they'll do it again this game. Now that they have a Shadow Fiend and a Clockwork, slowing down their early push. Yep. This their early ability course. to get out of the, the base, rather. The uh, zero minute bounty rune, of course, is uh, 200 gold split amongst your entire team. So it would be very nice for oh. them to be able to pick up. Chandris might make a move here. Puck is going to show. Oh, Puck. Well, bottom lane. Which is going to be hard to catch that anyway. They're actually going to go down. That's going to be the cast bounces. The nightmare. Oh my god, that cast bounce was just enough for the um, game is hard to be able to come down and snatch away that bounty room. So it's going to be just a two for two bounty room snatch there. Uh, with, even with the Shadow Fiend getting 11 souls. So John's I... very happy with how that started. I'm kind of surprised that Clockwork didn't go for the kill there on a Bane who had their spell on cooldown. I suppose and... because uh, I mean they didn't have uh, they don't have battery assault they had cogs, and they had Witch Doctor's uh, stun was down as well. Fair enough. Yeah, they want to get they want to get Clockwork back to block the lane is more important because once again Johns Hopkins University is going to be putting the aggro tri lane out. Three heroes mid, two of them for Marietta, trying to secure a strong early game for Outworld Devour, who they know will be trying to last hit against the Shadow Fiend, who has a large advantage because of the cogs that he has denied. And in the top lane, right now it's just a Bane versus Enchantress. Yeah, Taiga taking a long time to get there because he's walking all the way from the bottom all the way to the top. Because he didn't want to get tri lane, obviously. Now, Luna's at half health sitting down here against the puck, but Luna does have support coming in. Uh, yeah, once a lot of damage, that's the way the cast coming out, he's doing with the stun, though, the stun isn't going to be there. A huge amount of damage won't think it would do it, but they won't be able to get the range for it. Puck's a little bit too quick, Lucid Beam isn't skilled. And the potion has been used by Luna. Now, Puck has an Orb of Venom. Puck also ha only has Tango, so Puck is going to take a while to regen up here. No mana regen. John Hopkins University has rotated the Clockwork mid. It is now a 2 on 2 lane mid. Two position 4s and two position 2s. Yeah, Puck and Witch Doctor are again going against each other. Witch Doctor is going to be able to find them. Oh, and immediate buyback Buy from back. Puck to be able to use that orb that he sent out just before he died value buyback there. Of course, it's very cheap in the early game to buy back like that, so um, I don't think he minds that at all. Now, let's take a look at how our Enchantress is doing here. She's doing okay on CS. She's just laning against... Gyro does put out a lot of magic damage. He's not too concerned, and Gyro can flat cannon to hit the Enchantress by attacking another creep. I don't think Enchantress is going to have one of those dream snowball games uh, here. I think Enchantress might actually have quite a bit of difficulty. Invisibility rune picked up on Witch Doctor. He's going to rotate mid. That now puts three heroes mid. All they need to do is get Clockwork on top of the cast. Then we'll get the another stun. No, there's going to be the barrier assault. Though. The body block aren't really there. Our just makes it the way. Tusk just posturing up, trying to say, get away from my buddy. Uh, very well done by Outworld Devourer, not getting blocked by Witch Doctor. That could have meant his death mid, which would have been uh, allowing Shadow Fiend to start taking the lane over. Um, yeah, if you got cogged, he probably died there, uh, thanks to the reasons. I do feel that Enchantress can get punished more by uh, the top lane. However, with Enfeeble, it's very oh, hard for her to last hit, and Gyro will likely not have too much of a problem taking this lane over. Yeah, that's very annoying. Actually, with yeah. Enfeeble, it, it kind of balances it out because Gyro has very low attack damage. <laughs> 
Yeah, Enchantress usually has very easy lane against most lanes, but uh, this lane actually has all the boxes ticked to so, well, deal with Enchantress. Of course, Starcom doesn't have to wrestle right click Enchantress. Actually, he finds a kill in the mid lane, sort of missing that one. There's going to be a Tusk Snowball in. Bottom lane? We'll find that kill. Puck goes down as well. We'll find a kill in the Puck. Um, Shadow Fuse can teleport down on mid, and we'll return to our lanes. Now, Witch Doctor has been forced back, which isn't that big of a deal as long as it's not a core. Yeah, Luna has two really boots of speed time. queued up on her quick buy. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming that was a mistake. Hopefully, uh, it doesn't buy uh, one boot per, uh, per feet, I guess. Now, has that ever happened to you? Have you ever bought two pairs of boots? Or on the flip side, have you ever just forgotten to buy boots? Oh yeah, I mean, multiple times. I, th I think I've, I played a game of anti the entire game without buying boots. Oh boy. And then I realized I don't have boots. Oh, top lane! Top lane is going to Chantress. snowball roll in over Enchantress. You can't oh, be untouchable against Missile Barrage, lady. Yeah, everyone just hit their spells. There wasn't much more to it. Everyone in top lane for Marietta just had to click on Enchantress and cast their spells. That untouchable doesn't do anything for her. Oh, right Clockwork now. has a haste. This is a very deadly rune for this hero. If he can get on top, he really wants to get on top of uh, he wants to get on top of the OD, however, I think he's gonna have to go for a different hero. I think it's very unlikely he'll get the OD. No, oh, so here we go. Top gyrocopter. Ping onto the gyro. Of course, this gyro can do a lot of damage within the cogs. There's going to be the barrier still coming out. Cogs as well. Rail trying to do as much damage. Ty got stuck in here. He's gonna get right click that nightmare saving him for the time being. Actually, he's gonna get out. Oh, he's doing so much damage with that uh, missile barrage. Actually, he's gonna get out for now. Game is hard trying to chase him down. One right click will do it. There and it that's is. actually fine. Rail is healing himself with that uh, nature of tendance and going to be okay as well. Now, look at our world devourer's item. Three mangoes. <laughs> That's the lane. Three mangoes and two Tasty. null talismans. He's committed to this lane. Taiga will return top. And both the supports are there. However, John Hopkins University, Johns Hopkins University is clockwork and enchanters have returned to full health and nearly full mana. Bottom lane, Puck is caught out again. Puck is caught. He's, he's Maldic oh. alone right now, taking right clicks from Luna. One more will do it, but well, actually, the Maldic the fog of war, Luna Maldic, can he dodge it? No, he actually does not have phase shift in time. And actually, Lula even getting that kill with that loosened beam, so that would be very better for Luna to get the CS. I like that. Anyways, uh, even yeah, I like how you call it CS. He's not even a creep though. Puck and... lives matter. <laughs> or a little level four puck and Clockwork's gonna rotate mid as well, uh, or rather Wish Doctor and Clockwork gonna rotate mid, trying to make a play on the Outworld Devourer who has. Uh... Not tasted. Oh, he's going into the oh, lane. Oh no, this is a mistake. There's going to be the coconut from the high ground. The bounce is going to be there as well. He's with Malik it up. One more raise with the torch. That's one charges. Away from him. It's going to be enough damage. Two more ticks remaining. I believe one more tick here. He's well, going he's to be fine. okay. I believe. Yep. One he definitely help. Tusk is going to pick up a top. Uh, double damage from top. Uh, but he gets found by Clockwork. If he doesn't have a snowball target, oh, as I say, he could take a lot of damage. <laughs> Clockwork just uh, hits him in the butt once and just yep. walks away. Now. Luna's getting a little bit low against Puck. I think we'll see. Yeah, here's Witch Doctor coming down to help Luna out. Um, and the game's oh, slowed down a little bit. Get dodged by the base shift. Well, actually, Kokon bounces back right onto him. Maldic on him as well. Oh, he's definitely dead from the Maldic. Oh, yeah. Can maybe phase shift one damage tick from it. He's going nice. to take another one. He's going to live. up. And yeah, 40 health. This will be okay. Okay, but that cost a salve and essentially his ability to lane mid lane, a little bit of a scrap. But our world devourer will be fine. Top lane, how's our enchantress doing? Gyro's just third on CS against Enchantress who is only at twelve. Gyro's twenty-eight and eighteen to Enchantress twelve and seven. Obviously Gyro's winning this lane. They're gonna go on Enchantress. Sealing himself through nature's attendance. Very hard to kill her with that last ball up. Surprisingly, with Puck even dying uh, three times here, doing better in CS than the Enchantress. Yeah, the Enchantress is going to have a very, it has a very hard lane, and this is going to likely lead to a very difficult game for her. Yeah. Uh, of course, Puck is relevant even without too much CS, but Enchantress yes. not too much. I do feel like this might uh, end up. Oh, Snowball in the mid lane against that shell. He's stuck under the shard, but they're not going to commit for that kill with the clockwork coming up for support. Now, both off laners are having difficulties, but I do agree. I think Puck will have an easier time getting into the game than an Enchantress. I, I'm, I'm concerned that Enchantress may be a non factor this game. Um, she does have impetus, so she can put some damage out now. Beating Gyrocopter to six over Gyrocopter, sharing a lane with a Bane. 
And Bane's just gonna keep enfeebling Enchantress, Ugh. making her lane more and more difficult. Oh my god, and the damage coming out from the flag cannon as well, and, of course. And, Untouchable doesn't do anything against that. Invisibility Rune is gonna be picked up shortly, I believe. And Outworld Devourer grabs Sanity's Eclipse in level 6. And so he's, he's aware that, you know, 6 heroes are off this mid. He wants to be able to win that fight when it breaks out. Uh, supports. Gyrocopter's actually backing out of top lane. Are there stacks for him? No, there are not. So for he's the gonna shrine. shrine up. Doesn't want to be low against the Enchantress with level 6, I guess. Shadowfiend wants to bait the OD out to set up yep. his Clockwork. Game clockwork doesn't want to be sharing battery in the Oh, yes, here we go. The... Well, he actually missed the second raise. We'll be letting the second raise there. No three raises on him, but the right click might be enough to take him down. Yes, there it is. Does. No Astro Prison to save himself. A little bit lucky with uh, some of those battery assaults hitting when it should. Here we go, top lane Enchantress. Yeah, there's Luke to roll in. Enchantress started healing with the nature's tendons. Can she survive? She's tanking all that missile barrage, but this is OS frog to the max. There's Luke and Nightmare to slow her down a little bit. Nature's tendons healing up to full. Yet again, it is over now for now. There's going to be uh, the flare coming out for the vision, and it's going to be okay. Now Clockwork coming in for revenge, but I'm not sure if oh, yes. can do that. There's still mana on Enchantress for him, um, but she gets enfeebled up. So very low damage on her. Now they're turning their attention on the Tusk, who's saving himself with the Snowball. Now Taiga going in the game is hard with that Missile Barrage. Rail would love to hold attack him, but he is too far away, out of sight, thanks to those trees. There was a huge creep wave there, so... Oh, oh here we go! Tusk is going to do it! Impetus is going to be enough. And we'll okay, now Tusk is going to be in big trouble. What more is he going to be able to do it? Oh my god. And this is why I love Enchantress, the damage from that tiny this little This is why creature. I hate Enchantress. <laughs> Ooh. Out of nowhere. Did he deserve that? Did he earn that? Of course. He, he, like, you see, those nature of tendons. Nice frog, are you them? seeing Tank this? Gank. <laughs> okay, well, it, well, I'm no longer concerned that enchantress will be a non-factor this game. Apparently, you, you know, that's just what we do here with that hero. Uh, one thing I want to point out is that Clockwork or uh, Gyrocopter did get a little ex too excited. Clockwork used Flat Cannon and Rocket Barrage at the same time when he could only attack an Enchantress. So he was getting the Rocket Barrage damage, but the Flat Cannon was getting wasted. Flat Cannon you want to use to attack creeps while enemy heroes are in range of the spread. Uh, Rocket Barrage you want to use when you're standing on only an enemy hero. Mid lane, Witch Doctor going against hard. There's going with the Coconut. Is there only the bounces? No, no bounces, actually. They don't get lucky there. Now, bottom lane, they have some spells oh, here. Oh, and speaking of, there's going to be Nicole as well. And the world punch. Goodbye, Luna. Uh, bye. She's out of here. Rail taking the top lane over now. Uh, no one's competing against her. This is Rail's time to get back in the game. Looking at CS as we move into the 11 minute mark here, Luna's leading. Uh, 59 to 28. However, OD and Gyrocopter on Marietta College take a position two and three. 53 and 20 on OD and 48 and 20 on Gyrocopter. Not far behind the Luna. Checking out net worth though. Enchantress second out of nowhere. Oh, Who's so five hundred? Fighting Clockwork in their own jungle. Roland is going to be there. Missile Barrage. But oh my God, that Tusk actually pushes him away. And the Cogs and actually the Cogs after the uh, Moonshine will be able to get himself out safe. Even the call down getting committed there as well. Great avoidance there by Game was hard. And now a very awkward Gyro OD mid lane. Oh, Both top lane economics. Oh, okay, thanks to the Nightmares we will get out. It's just TP. I was like, no, screw this lane. I'm I'm not close to here with Enchantress. And Death Ward is up, so I think Witch Doctor wants to fight. Oh my god, he's gonna find a Gyro. Oh, what? They just nope. look at each other and run away. <laughs> okay. Was it AFK again? I think he might have. There there was definitely kill potential based on bounces there with Maldict and Luna in range. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they were going on against them. There's gonna be the Maldict and Death Ward, as you said. He's yeah, I guess that. He'll probably take down there. Yuki easily taking them down. Now Tusk getting chased down by Luna. Luna has a mass man, but it is off now. Eclipse not being committed. And now they've rotated Puck to deal with the Enchantress. Now the poke harass Puck can deal with with phase shift. However, if they get into a full fight, Enchantress is likely going to blow the Puck up. Although Puck does high magic damage, Enchantress is just going to start impetusing the low health pool on Puck. Yeah, not uh, enough uh, magic damage yeah, for Puck to build. Puck to doesn't kill. do enough to just eliminate Enchantress. Enchantress will win. Now they still have Eclipse uh, as we see Gyrocopter return. Three heroes though on Marietta, so they have the advantage and no death ward on Johns Hopkins University. The Witch Doctor's not even in lane. Fiend's Grip is not up yet. Level 5 Bane. And Clockwork's trying to decide what he wants to do with Hookshot. They're gonna go for a shrine. 
Yeah, Both teams kind of want to take a fight right now, but they want to get ready for it. These next fights are what are going to lead us into the mid game, and both teams want to be going into the mid game uh, uh, with with some momentum. So there's a yep. four man shrine here for John Johns Hopkins University, who has a two K lead currently and a five kill lead. And let's see what they do with it. So Hookshot is up. Enchantress is level ten, rotating out of her lane, and they're about to roll up on a. No. Uh, yeah, oh, there's level six on Bane. Many heroes showing up bottom. Four for Johns Hopkins now, two for Marietta. Johns Hopkins has a huge numbers advantage, twice the numbers if they can get a fight. This Words are coming up from Bane. Just to catch up. Mm -hmm. Now, Johns Hopkins University Johnny's needs to do something top. right now. Zombie They're just running top. around wasting time. Well, as you pointed out, Puck is going to take it, uh, get some farm, actually using spells Johnny's on Fort Puck. Here we go, mid lane, Shadow Fiend. Yep, there's going to be Shadow Fiend getting right. caught in that uh, shard. Now Luna they want coming into it. Eclipse, oh, Eclipse doesn't even get used. And Walk by, uh, by Luna's body, so now we'll, we'll cancel the Fiend's grip. Now, Puck will go down. Bye bye. Bye bye. Tusk is the only one that's going to pay the price. Now, they didn't get the bottom tower because of that. Sanity's Eclipse drained Clockwork's mana pool, I believe, is what happened there and why he was unable to break it. Although he did miss the hook shot. Sanity's Eclipse uh, ruined the Fiend's grip. That is Johns Hopkins University went hunting, but Marietta had set a trap. Mid lane, Shadow Fiend's eliminated. Luna and Clockwork port in to save them. However, they end up just setting Marietta up to enter the mid game in a dominant fashion. Uh, taking out two cores, position one, the position two, as well as the position four. In the yeah, meantime, Puck has been chipping player. away at top tower. They'll even get the bot, which is the most tragic thing. Don't yeah, and that hook shot being missed is so top. tragic, because if that landed, they might have a chance. And an insane sanity's eclipse, draining Clockwork's mana. Top yeah, so he doesn't even have a chance to cancel that Fiend's mm -hmm. grip with his barrier soul. Now, so Blink Dagger finish off for Puck. It's a decent timing considering uh, the bad line, that bad lane he had. I wouldn't. Uh, I would have kind of. I would have liked a. Uh, I think a Veil would have been great as well for a first item in this game with how much magic damage is coming out. Yeah, but the Blink Dagger is going to get the catch, which is going to set up the call down. It's going to let the rest of the teams uh, set up ice shards and all the other fun stuff that will win them these fights. Now, OD hasn't left mid lane. OD has a four staff first item, likely going to turn into a Hurricane Pike. Which is probably what we'll see from Enchantress. Actually, Enchantress is going Dragonlance or Kit. So she wants to have another way to break Fiend's grip and to kill Puck. Bottom lane. Point. Tusk is the only one bottom. They still haven't used Eclipse, which I don't like. I would love to see them fight with Eclipse and farm when it's down. And fight with Eclipse and farm when it's down. A very classic way to play Luna, very effective way to play Luna, and a great way to get her to the late game without losing your base. Because Luna is very difficult to deal with in the late game. Yeah, they'll go push this tower in again. They'll go with an Invis room picked up on Taiga, who's going to be heading towards the bot. There's going to be the roll in by the Tusk over onto Luna. Going to roll is punched up and then Dream pulled up as well. Luna still has Eclipse, he wants to commit. Fiend's grip, meanwhile, in under the towers, we will catch that, the Witch Doctor. And Luna, and meanwhile, TP's out, which leaves the game is hard by himself. So go down. The best thing that Johns Hopkins University did there was teleport their Luna out. Uh, they, uh, Johns Hopkins University was completely in control by, or Marietta was completely in control of that fight, uh, before it even started, with Gyro just following the clockwork, with Witch Doctor being Fiend's grip under the tower, and Luna being dream coiled outside of the fight. There was just no way Johns Hopkins University salvaged this and teleporting out. It's a great deal. Here we go, Tusk is feeding mid. Yeah, it's going to be going in. I don't Goodbye. know what that rolling was about. And yeah, exactly what you called it is it looks like he's just feeding. He's just he's mad at his team running down mid. <laughs> oh boy. Six months. <laughs> no, I think he got excited. They had a great fight bottom. They, he's in the lead. He wants to keep the momentum going. Snowballing, if you will. Uh OD was walking by. Hey, check this out, and then they just teleport everyone and it'll shout up. Now, because of that, Johns Hopkins University has committed five four heroes to the mid. They're likely going to try and make a push here. Here comes the call down, getting off the raid. Yeah, won't come in for the tower. It's going to get lost to the by the Luna. Tower for call down. Jumps off the Puck, Puck, meanwhile, is taking that bottom tower. With Enchantress taking top as well, so it's going to be probably just an offlane tower for an offlane tower here. 
Pog does get that last hit. Enchantress. Still 200 health to go, so probably one more lane creeps here. Oh, going to roll in on her. She's going to come in for the tower still. She just be very stubborn with it. She gets the last hit thanks to Nature's Attendance. She doesn't care, but she might care about the Phoenix Grip She's though. She's healing. Her is going the wrong yeah, way. It doesn't care, actually. I'm, I'm wrong. The Tusk is trying to get in there, but she's, she's so adorable. Luna's she rotating in too with but the Eclipse. But the Nightmare, the Nature's Attendance is over. Eclipse, he gets coming, the Ergonomics gets barely out. Now Tusk is rolling in on Enchantress, but now he has no damage left. But now there is going to be a Dream Pull as well. TP out on the Enchantress. Enchantress is going to be cancelled up thanks to that uh, Astro Imprisonment. Now we're really getting now. Finally. And Ikaro Magic actually it. takes the last hit, waiting with the Brain Sap. Uh, it, I think I would have I would have preferred to have OD capture the Luna and let the yeah, Enchantress for go. Sure. However, they're the two highest net worth heroes on the team. Both are great. Eclipse was wasted. The first time we get to see the spell, nothing comes of it. This is this is not what they want. Here we go. Shadow Blade on Gyrocopter mid. To be oh. a fight there. They're going to be a complete miss on right. that ult. Hit him there, but pushes him to that move, which is going to be enough to kill him. Shadow Fiend just teleports out. He doesn't want to deal with what's about to happen. He'll go and become the space creator. Bottom. Now, three heroes on Marietta are mid. Fiend's Grip is down. Dream Coil is down. And Walrus Punch is down. And Sanity's Eclipse is down. But they are going to attempt a push on this tower. They know Eclipse is down and Requiem is down. And Death Ward. So with no alts, we might see a strap or we might just see Marietta take a tower for free. It looks like the ladder mid tower goes down. There are now, there's now only one T1 tower left in the game. Marietta has held on to a very low health safe lane tower. Marietta is rotating four of their heroes bottom to make a move, and they will likely run into an enchantress, a hero that has been very difficult to kill uh, as this game has progressed. This game has been very much neck and neck so far. Now, is this the first time that we're lead for John Hopkins? It's been so back and forth and such minor leads, so... Now with Shadow Requiem's... No, uh, 40 seconds on Requiem. Clockwork does have Hookshot. Uh, Luna does not have Eclipse just yet. Um, Marietta is in a position where if they take a fight right now, they'll win. But if we go a little bit longer, it will be much more even. That's just because of their ult cooldowns. Now, Hart doing what he did last game, creating a ton of space on his mid lane hero. Luna has Mask of Madness Yasha, so this is a strong farming build. I like this. She can fight, she can farm. She does have to worry about her low health pool, and she's going for a Manta. Uh, the Manta... I would like to see a BKB, because the Manta Illusions are going to get destroyed by OD, and the Manta's not really going to help Luna too much with her poor health pool. I think the BKB makes more sense, because it's going to let her get an Eclipse off without being captured or silenced or anything. Um, and I guess there is still a Fiend's Grip to worry about. Yeah, there still is a Fiend script though, which is BKB Piercing. However, with the Clockwork, uh, it shouldn't be too hard to cancel that. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully. Now, this would have been a game where going Yules over Shadow Blade on Shadow Fiend, uh, I think you can make a great argument for it. Another way to break Fiend script. Okay. However, Shadow Blade is still, uh, we've seen it do work so far. The puck went Dagon. Oh, kill the Enchantress. That's what, she, that's what the puck wants to do. I Screw like the hero. This. I like this. They don't want to go late against Luna, and they just love how powerful their mid-game team fight is. Puck's committing, and I respect yeah. the commitment from Puck. Now, does Puck have the mana for all of his spells? Yeah, he has. Yeah, he's committed. Yeah, he's an intelligence hero. He's a smart mm -hmm. boy. Now, it's going to be Here moving into the jungle. They would love to find a Luna. Now... Game is hard. There's Here we go. We were tanking that tank no, looks on like. They're on top of a ward. They're standing right on top of a ward. Yep. They actually might avoid this gank completely here. That's going to be a wasted uh, smoke. Luna is going to TP herself into the mid lane. Doesn't even want to be anywhere near that. And Chantress is going to claim the last T1 potentially. Yep, just going to be constantly right attacking that. This ward is so valuable right now. Oh, this ward is amazing by John Hopkins, Johns Hopkins University. The Varian is just standing on it. Yeah. Now they want to pick it. Really really I think a huge amount of damage. They're going to send the Eclipse. That's not going to kill her, but the Earth is going to take her down probably. Now, the heart is going to save himself for the time being with the actual imprisonment. Blue Stock Tech has taken down the whole mess as well. Heart Place finally has taken down. Now the input is going into the Tusk. Two for two trades so far. Ergonomics sitting it out. There's going to be scouted by that flare, but do they have the moves to, to catch up to him? Radiance middle Back and on, on, on. Yeah, and they'll have any way to stop. 
All right, well, even with Sight, watching an Outworld Devourer with double damage walk into your jungle, Luna and Witch Doctor still lose their lives. Uh, I think that was a mistake by Johns Hopkins University. However, they did get the OD in a Tusk. Uh, a position one and a position five for a position two and a position four. Eh. The net worth lead is on Johns Hopkins' sides now, but it's a side, but it's less than 1,000 gold. Yeah. Uh, I want to see our Enchantress show up. She's going for an Aghanim Scepter. Likely uh, Hurricane Pike after that. Maybe something more fancy. Uh, both Aghanims and Hurricane Pike are just classic items they, they're just amazing synergy with how enchantress is uh impetus works uh dealing more damage over the range that it covers it, it also will allow greedy, though uh, it'll allow see them enchantress to push, like though. stop by yeah but they are usually see enchantress stop by for a defensive item between the dragon lance and Aegon scepter kind of like mm -hmm. hood usually but it is they both have lots of stats and health you can see yeah. at 1400 health right now and that's not carrying her ogre club uh, all of John Hopkins is about the same spot, but I don't think they're grouping up for anything. Luna's just gonna keep farming. They're actually giving her the last on the ward. And... Marietta College looking through the jungle. John Hopkins has the university has no sight of this, although they do see a purple player running around. And then that ward again. Tusk also popped his, uh, dust as well, thinking that, uh, maybe Shelfie was nearby. It's interesting they didn't use a scan for that. There's the spell amp on Puck, bringing more value to the Dagon. Puck is going for a veil as well. Now Puck, I believe they know Puck is there with this ward. Yes, they do. Man, Tiger's finish on Luna. And <laughs> everyone is just content with farming for now. They see each other and they just back off. Hard pushes out top lane and then backs off. Everyone looking to finish their items. Speaking of finishing their items, Rail finishes his Agon Scepter on the Enchantress. Has tremendous range on the Impetus. If you just hover over the Impetus skill, mm -hmm. oh my god. It's the entire screen length. Jeez. Yeah. Attack range, 880. Uh, New sniper. Good. Yep. Now, gonna go finish off a Hurricane Pike. Fair enough. More mobility, more intelligence. Yep. Yep, and just set you up the same way OD wants to just... I want to see OD and Enchantress Hurricane Pike each other at the same time and just get wild. <laughs> I feel like OD might have a slight edge on that thanks to the uh, Astral Imprisonment. Now Enchantress is getting pinged mid. Rail. Does a ton oh of damage. Oh my god, Heart loses half of his life <laughs> from just two pedas. Very slow game for, especially coming from uh, Marietta College with the OD, a puck who built Dagon, and a Gyrocopter. Very powerful mid game fight up. Playing against a Luna, a hero that's gonna not have a problem bringing the game late. Uh, it's surprising that they're slowing it down this much. Yeah, I agree. It's just like both teams are very content with uh, farming here. I mean, something uh, that can happen in these games, like very important games like playoffs, I mean, your single mistakes can mean you're completely out of the season. Um, a lot of times teams get a little bit timid to take any aggressive actions and they just kind of play what's safe, which usually is farming. And that's what might be what we're seeing here. And Johns Hopkins University is on their elimination game. Having the Luna to fall back on, I do believe I would favor them in the late game. OD, Gyrocopter, Puck, uh, these are all great. Tusky the transition to a core. Fiend's Grip is always relevant. Um, not trying to say that it, we're going to go late and it'll be as one sided as it was last game with the Spectre. But Luna is definitely the scary hero in the late game this game. And Shadow Fiend uh, scales very well as well. Now, Shadow Fiend is going. He has the Dragon Lance, actually. It's kind of a ganky safe pushy build. Here we go on Gyrocopter. I don't think he's going to get a kill. Yeah, Gyro just backs on out. And we're going to keep on farming. What I would like to see is Marietta make a move. Uh, Puck has queued up all of his uh, Dagon levels, and he's sitting by the tower. I like this. It's, I would almost think it's worth it to just go for the Clockwork, except Clockwork has a Blade Mail, and Puck could be in a very dangerous situation. Incoming. It's been now, like... More heroes are rotating. We do have a 4 on 3 top, there's the coil. Clockwork is very scared right now, he's going to get punched up, it's going to be a on down. And there's finally a kill. Now Tusk, maybe he will pay for the price as well, Nightmare is going to stop at least. Yes, put under, there it is. Imprisonment as well. 
will be able to save himself away from the battle phase. He has one more tick. Oh, there oh, it is. Oh, barely. Yeah, that astral imprisonment coming in clutch. And I believe he was getting healed by the spirit vessel uh, yeah, during it. I'm not sure how the interaction works, but I think it still heals you. Yeah, I was actually clicked onto him and I saw his health. You know, you can do that with Snowball too in the landing phase with the healing salve. Oh, that's very you smart. Can, you can, yeah, you can healing solid with Snowball. It's really, it's, that's a sick move to fall. You can do it with your teammates as well. That's really good. That would that would be the big, that would be the I give me a command whether we win or lose play. <laughs> so Luna's topping CS, but Gyrocopter and OD are behind position two and three. Uh, top tower is T2 tower, uh, owned by Johns Hopkins University. He's going to take some damage. Clockwork picks up his boots at 28 minutes into the game, and they're tranquil boots. Okay. Give himself some more move speed, so we can roam around the map a little bit more, I guess. I guess so. Uh, she's just gonna Fuck be again, to sitting in her favorite spot. Here we go. This time it's going to be another man. same setup there. Go be oh, snap on the coral as well. Up. And where is the Dagon? No Dagon. Actually, maybe I would already use it. Oh, and, and then there isn't enough intelligence for Sandy's Eclipse. Actually, does zero damage against Rail, who happens to have more intelligence. Now that will pay for it, thanks to the uh, cars coming out and oh Eclipse coming in as well. Huge blunder here coming out from the side of uh, Marietta. Mm -hmm. Well, they have two gyrocopters in the jungle right now. Instead of being in lane, strangely enough, when he has creeps right beside him, farming the ogres. Uh, and they're gonna turn this into a Roshan, or at least attempt to do it. They did commit Eclipse, however, Dream Coil and Sanity's Eclipse was committed as well as Outworld of Hours Life. Um, Gyro's gonna sh just be bottom lane, so JHU know that they can likely take the safety, Gyro being a strong mid-game fighter. Now, the Exigil actually scouting out this Roshan attempt. Charged as well, but they're not going to deter them from taking it. He just goes over to Luna. And I like it. Now what is our Luna doing? So she has her Mantle style. BKB is queued up next. I like a lot. It's going to stop a ton of damage coming out from Marietta who has a lot of magic. The physical damage she needs to worry about is from Gyrocopter who's currently hitting for, what's that, about 191 damage. And uh, it's not something to laugh at, but it's not the scariest. OD is going to lose a ton of damage not being able to gain Arcane Orb on Luna. Uh, also not going to be able to hurricane pike her, and hopefully Luna will be able to get a successful eclipse on like the first one of yeah. the match. Now Puck has returned top. OD kind of has that like kind of a weird power curve, right? He gets really strong in the mid game, gets really weak when Spool pick up BKB, and then gets really strong again when Spool's BKBs go down to five seconds. As well as when he hits level 20 and gets the uh, Sanity's Eclipse multiplier, which is often picked up, at least in pub games. That is a serious R button. He it has, has a lot of damage. And you can also get the uh, level 25 60 second arc in orbit uh, instill to make sure you can Which carry over those intelligence from the Yeah, that's a great way to, to end a game. Uh, and also give him some pushing ability because the damage to seals who will go into his, or the intellect to seals will go into his base damage, which he can bring onto his towers, unlike arcane orb damage. Now, it uh, looks like Johns Hopkins University might be comfortable crossing the river. They might just back off. Yeah, Johns Hopkins University just wants to take this late. Puck is building a Dagon, and he's committed to building a Dagon. Dagon 3 on. With Dagon 4 and Dagon 5 queued up. Dagon lose a tier 2 top if the... Yeah, Luna's going to rotate and help, but that's already 182 health left on the tower. Just shy of deny range. Who's sitting up here top? Now it's a Tusk up here. What is he doing up here? Tusk, you're not Puck. I think it might be actually time for some tinker words up here. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Oh, they're going to be finding a uh, shelf in the mid lane that's going to pop out his 10 second BKB. Now the Nightmare actually saving Puck for time being, like it's not going to be enough now. The Malik's going on him. He's going to stay in. Oh my god, Ooh, perfectly timed. Uh, um, Shadow Ray is going to be able to take down that Puck. And Gyrocopter has become a race car. 505 movement speed, going for Butterfly next. Makes sense, he's, he's a plane after all. Middle tower and John Hopkins University showing up on Marietta's side. Here we go, taking a mid T2. Enchantress attacking it from the other side of the map. Enchantress likely going to stay on the high ground while they siege the high ground because of her insane range. I don't know <laughs> if they'll be able to take this tower, but they'll definitely put the might actually be able to take this. So they can go in. Maybe they fortify for a minute, they might back out. Of course, there's an age is still up on Luna. There's going to be the Hurricane Pike play over on the Gyrocopter. He's going. 
actually almost dies. 400 health left on him. If he had the vision for the last auto attack, I would be able to kill him. Now that is tier 3 down just on the puck kill. Now they're going to be rolling onto Luna. This might be the Aegis claimed here. Luna is going to take off the Spirit Vessel all for herself with the Manta. Oh my god, now. Pete, Hart, one more of those that will do it, but we'll get away from the scary Enchantress. Now, Luna on to herself. Now Tiger gotta be careful. There's gonna be the Eclipse coming in. There's going to be dodging both the Eclipse and the uh, from the base chest. But yeah, Puck is going to come back and just absolutely delete it. Now, happy with the Rax exchange that will be able to get themselves out. Tusk is speeding oh, again. Tusk is going to barely catch the Woodchucker oh. at the end. Um, and the blink away from Tusk will keep himself safe for now. Can they find Luna? Oh, barely gets to get the punch there. Tusk almost gets the punch. Stop now, in the meantime, Gyrocopter's Illusions did a ton of damage to the T2 bottom for Johns Hopkins University. Obviously, that is not as big of a deal as losing a Puck twice and a lane of Rax mid, but the bottom T2 is at very low health, as well as the top T2 is at very low health for Johns Hopkins University. Those are two towers that Marietta can take easily to get an injection of gold, keep their head above water, but as it stands, Johns Hopkins University is starting to take control of this game. Now, Shrines have opened up. Um, Roshan may respawn in just under four minutes. He's still a way out, but that does uh, give um, Johns Hopkins University a lot of time to take the enemy shrines and take map control and abuse it. The net worth difference is very similar, or it's not that big. It's only 6k net worth difference uh, lead for Johns Hopkins University. However, two heroes did just a 20. Luna's going to grab 10 all stats and 100. Untouchable slow for Chantress. It's just picked up. Uh, also, two four staffs were picked up. Uh, Shadowfiend picked up his, and Luna grabbed hers. Both turning oh, there's it into three hurricane, hurricane pikes on this team. <laughs> They're gonna push around. We might see a conflict here, top lane. Yep. Heart might get. Uh, oh, get Luna's gonna get caught out. I think. It's going to be the hook shot. I don't know where that actually went. So he just completely whiffed. Clockwork really wanted. Yeah. Yeah, that would be a great fight. kill there, taking ten to Heart. Now, oh, Shadow Fiend. Finds a puck, can't do anything with it. They know Puck's No detection on them, I believe. Yeah, no detection currently. Puck's gonna look for a kill, but what's he gonna do? He needs a Witch Doctor, who has a Glimmer Cape, is probably his only target. Puck did go stop by the Veil Discord, by the way. So he has the Dagon 3 and Veil Discord, and that's going to be where he stopped his Dagon build up and going for the Dagon Scepter after. I like that. Um, yeah, he grabbed the Veil after Dagon 1 which I think is a great call of his team, as well as he has a spell amp talent already. Now, anyone getting close to talents? Bane is getting to 15 shortly. Two great talents, 40% XP. We'll get Bane right back in the game, and Feeble steals damage. That Bane is not much of an auto attacker as a thing, but, you know, stealing 120 damage is no laughing matter. Oh, actually, they find the kill onto the... Uh... Buckle, so it's hiding within the trees in the bot lane, but uh, John Hopkins getting wise to those Buck's tricks. Now Luna's getting pinged quite a lot. She's gonna back out. There's OD. And Luna has a butterfly queued up. How's Gyrocopter's progress? He has a butterfly queued up. He almost has the butterfly. Uh, obviously wants to hold on to buyback. Got it. It looks like they want to take this bottom tower for that Puck kill. Mm -hmm. Puck has been getting caught out quite a bit, Radiance and with the Dagon as her attack. item, she is not very scary. Uh, I don't even know if it would be possible for her to finish off a Witch Doctor with that. So since Witch Doctor has Glimmer Cape and is holding a point booster. Witch Doctor doing the same build as last time. Glimmer Cape, Cape Agonims. Now why not? That's the classic Witch Doctor build. On, yeah, it is. He just wants to use his ult. <laughs> he, has the, uh, he went for the gold per minute over the cast bounces as well. There is going to be the tower taken in the top lane as well against the Luna. So it's going to be a tower trade, tier 2 for tier 2. And now the shrines are getting pinged out. Take advantage of your ability to go for shrines with the other team. Can't. Roshan may respawn in 40 minutes, seconds, so we'll see after that. If um, John Hopkins can take down the top shrine and the top tier 2, they'll have a huge advantage going into this Roshan fight. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Now, uh, Sheepstick has been picked up on OD being, and a Blink Dagger as well. So if they're able to catch Shadow Fiend or they're able to catch Luna before the BKB goes off, they'll likely get a kill. However, Glimmer Cape is a fantastic counter to that if Witch Doctor is in range and quick enough. 
Um, the game has slowed down quite a bit. Uh, Puck is trying to make things happen, but it doesn't feel like Puck's team is on the same uh, boat now. Yeah. Roshan will have a 48 second respawn time. Decently quick. Got very shortly. And we're gonna see the smoke come out for Marietta, who's gonna run into Johns Hopkins University. Here it is. Well, that's going to be the uh, glimmer cape there trying to stop the, uh, the chip stick, but that's not gonna be enough. It's gonna be taken down through this BKB. Now Luna coming in with her own BKB, trying to restore damage. The heart gets taken down. Luna now going ham with this uh, ma uh, mask of madness. Going up against the economics as well. The illusions chasing him down. It's not gonna be enough to be able to stop him. Now, the flat cannon is coming in, Luna taking a huge amount of damage from the gyrocopter. Now Luna, Luna's gonna lose her life. Now, Rail by herself is going to get taken down. Now, pops the BKB a little bit late there. Uh -oh. He's gonna be able to die during that duration. Oshan's up in one second. Uh, Marietta College. Witch Doctor was quick with Glimmer Cape, but very slow with the death. He waited for maybe five or six seconds before he ended up casting it. He could have almost got the corporation went off. Uh, the, ke the, the pick off there from Marietta, as we discussed with the Sheep Stick, that's exactly what they wanted to happen. Although they did trade OD, Tusk, and Bane at the end. Tusk bought back and trading an OD and Bane for an entire team, that's a huge deal. Now, what are they going to do with it is the question. Obviously, that fight is good, but if uh, Marietta College just returns to farming, it essentially didn't really mean too much. Uh, they should know the Roshan could be up soon. Gyrocopter is actually just going to look through. Gyrocopter is oh, well, yes, going up. Gyrocopter. Yeah, there's the Divine Rapier. You think he's going to commit for a Divine Rapier? If he does get the money? I think he has a fantastic front line, and I don't think he'll have a problem getting the attacks on. Yeah, that last Gyro game, he came and just cleaned up. Yeah. Yeah, he, he was in great fighting shape at the end of the fight. There's the thing. Denied. And well, there's a tower down. Now they're gonna likely check on Roshan. Tusk scouts Roshan right now. Help Tusk does up. help with Roshan with the frozen sigil, although it is on cooldown. He's gonna pull it on over. And Clockwork has scouted Roshan. Both teams are now aware that Roshan is alive. However, Johns Hopkins University does not have top lane pushed out at all, nor bottom lane. And there's a double damage bottom. Uh, if Marietta can keep the pressure up and grab the double damage, I don't think they'll have a problem with Roshan. But for now, it looks like we're just gonna keep playing a little bit slow. Yeah. John Hopkins knows this Roshan's up as well. They have been scouting it with the rocket flare from Clockwork. The smoke is used. Here we go. And Luna has actually, uh, after her butterflies, queuing up the monkey to fly. So she wants to be able to deal with Gyro. Smoke. They won't see the Tusk Illusion fighting against the Roshan. They don't want to pop it. They would love to take this sneak. Oh, here. as soon as it goes down, they just go right in. Yep. Purple sees the pink nose. Yeah. They, 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 they sense it. They can smell it. Now they're coming in to call there down. There it is. The Roshan is very low. Can they do this? The BKB gets up preemptively. Her comes in. Actually, gets the Roshan kill, but the Age of Sales goes to the Shadow Feet. Now the Eclipse gets fully channeled up. Bane's the first one to fall. Now, the Tusk trying to save himself for a time being with the Snowball. Meanwhile, the, the Clockwork will sacrifice his life on the other side, frontlining for his team. It's going to be a two for one trade. Age is still on the Shadow Feet. Where's the cheese, by the way? Where is the cheese? Now that's actually going in the favor of Johns Hopkins University. Uh, Gyrocopter put out an insane amount of damage that fight and played quite safe. He's gonna be trying to play like that every fight, and that's one of the reasons he has a Divine Rapier queued up, is he can pull something like that off. Yeah. Gyrocopter actually hasn't been using his drum charges, probably because he hasn't really been fighting too much, to be honest. <laughs> um, Gyrocopter's gonna want to buy the Divine Rapier in one big purchase after having buyback saved up because you don't want to give away. You don't just buy as like a sacred relic right now. That just yeah. completely gives away. They're not gonna assume Gyrocopter's going Radiance. Blessing. Now. Butterfly finish on Luna. That's a big item for herself. Mm -hmm. And now she's gonna go for the MKB. So very aggressive build. She'll be able to pump out a ton of damage, especially with her glaives. Uh, but I think we're just gonna see both teams return to farming now. Uh, Aegis is on Shadowfiend, so if John Hopkins want to do something, um, they got about five, four more minutes to be able to do it. There's the Rapier. Rapier. Rapier's picked up. Okay, so and this is end game now. Man. Level 25 on Gyrocopter as well, which he took global cooldown over what? the uh, three homing missiles, which is what? 
Was that a misclick? I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't seem as useful as a three uh, home, especially considering that he has the divine rapture and he can use all the CC he can get. He's pinging. He's pinging himself. Is he pinging for a smoke? I think he's pinging himself. I like to believe yeah. he's pinging himself. <laughs> this he's might be a huge fight here. Divine here we go. Here's the smoke. Kind of, oh, they, this is exactly the situation they want. There's the global call down. Now, Luna gets uh, picked up. And the sheep stick is going to be on there. He's going to take it now if they can do anything about it. Now, Gyrocopter is doing so much damage. That was in the middle of the fight. Divine Rapier. They don't even know he has it. Shell yeah. Shell is the right target. Shell Speed is detected right now. Thanks to the dust. He's going to take it down with that. Um, Dagon. Now Clockwork in the Wolf Survivor. Now um, Chelfie will come back up. He goes so, um, stunned by the World Punch and Jarrokov oh coming in. Sure that kill with that missile. Now, after claiming that fight, there's a less than one kill from Marietta College. Damage done by by Gyrocopter, six thousand. The next closest was OD at two, and there not one other player broke four digits on his team. That was Gyrocopter alone. Yeah. So. What we can take from that is that Gyrocopter is currently Marietta College. If Gyrocopter <laughs> dies, Marietta College likely dies. If Gyrocopter is able to attack like that, Marietta College is going to dominate the team fight. For sure. And John Hopkins, damage. Good. again, going down because of the exact same spot, taking down the shrine. Of course, when you take down the shrine, you reveal your position there and giving a very easy initiation for OD to blink in and get the side device. There's initiation double damage up. now on Gyrocopter. Ooh, oh my god. 774 damage. Let's go. Yeah, uh, no Still buyback. Still second left on Shadow Fiend as well, so they're able to do considerable amount of damage if they can get into the I would kind of like to see him just pressure a T1, just take it. Just take the T1. Don't be scared. Uh, especially with this haste rune. Just come on, take it, take a, or not T1, rather, a T3. At least yeah. the T2 bottom. Looks like, uh, I mean, this is what Divine Rapier does, right? It makes you play real scared, and for a good reason. Mm, I hate it. I think it's a bad reason. I think you buy the Divine <laughs> Rapier, play. Play the game like you have a Divine Rapier. Kill people. Divine Rapier, double damage, haste rune. Come on, don't use it to farm jungle creeps. Gyrocopter, you're driving me crazy. <laughs> That's from an editor. I'm, I'm not the one. I'm not the one in the elimination playoff match. Yeah, of course that just puts additional pressure on them, especially with someone with the Divine Rapier. You don't want to be the reason your team lost. Now I imagine we're likely only going to see one or two team fights uh, based on buybacks here. Now that the Divine Rapier is really picked up. Uh, that puts a timer on the game as soon as the fights break out. There's the Aghanim's Witch Doctor to make it very easy for Witch Doctor to get those attacks off. Uh, Witch Doctor also closing in on Death Ward attack range at 20. He could go for the Maldic Tick, but against the amount of BKBs and the Puck and the Snowball Save and the Bane, I feel like the Death Ward range makes a lot of sense, especially if you're going Aghanim's Scepter. So, about the global cooldown, Global cooldown, rather. Um, actually, that might have been the reason why they won that last team fight because uh, global cooldown came up and they knew they um, retired the global cooldown because he used it before. Um, and Luna did not pop the BKB because <laughs> if she knew that Darkopter was in range to go call down, she'll pop the BKB and maybe that will not have the reason for the side. I think Darkopter was in range for a normal call down though. Like when he, where he used it, he could have done it without global. Now, I just don't know why Luna did not pop BKB. Oh, here we so go. Caught out Clockwork, but the team's gonna back off. There's gonna oh. be a lot of blinks coming in. There's going to be the, um, Quite the commitment. Dream Coil. There's going to be the Eclipse, which is going to be completely stopped up by the Snowball. Now they gotta get out of here. That's a work coming out from the high ground just to push them away. It's just going to back off. Right. One thing to keep in mind is uh, Clockwork, every time he uses Cogs, he's opening up targets for Gyrocopter to uh, flat cannon off of. Which is uh, just it just helps him out in the team fights. It's just more yeah. more targets that are going to be in the middle of the fight for him to hit if he can't get in range. They're very safe. It's not it's not really dangerous to go near uh, flat cannon. Um, so Clockwork has a blade now, which has seemed since he's had it from the early game has seemed like a great item. Here, although he hasn't really gotten much use out of it with the Dagon with a Divine Rapier. Hopefully Clockwork's gonna get some use out of this item time. I would yeah. like to see Clockwork actually finish a Spirit Vessel just so he has an increased health pool so he doesn't have to worry about getting blown up and uh, not getting value out of the Blade Mail. So I think the Blade Mail is his most high impact item right now. Yeah, because Gyrocopter can't really prevent himself from hurting the Clockwork. Exactly, exactly. And Gyrocopter's going for a Satanic, I wanna say that is. Yep, that's Satanic. Yes, yeah. it's probably a smart idea considering the amount of damage you do. Mm -hmm. 
now. Very close to 25 on Shadow Fiend. Uh, but we're going to slow the game right back down. Which one going to be shown in one minute? That's going to be very relevant. That one is going to be... Uh, refresh to shard on that one. Puck is very close to 25 as well. I'd love to see Dream Core Rapid Fire. I think it's just hilarious. <laughs> it's also a great way to fight. She's and not with really refresher, for it, though, for sure. But with Refresher Orb, it's insane. Yeah. Um, getting two of those off, that's just kind of like a I win button if you can get two good ones. Although you can say that about a lot of vaults. And Luna hit level 25 as well, took the life 420 gold per minute on Puck. Come on. Why'd you even get the refresher orb? I mean, it's, it's hard to make Dream Cold Rapid Fire work when you don't have the, when you're, when you're built for it. I mean, if you have a Mjolnir, that's uh, talented, absolutely crazy, but doesn't have any right clicking items. I guess he has global combat. But on this, his, his Dream Coils. Um, 420 gold per minute is going to allow him to buy Moon Shards. For people like Gyro, it's going to put the Sheep Stick on Puck, who's going to have a Refresher. Or who probably does have a Refresher. Or did he just swap out? There's the Sheep oh, Stick the on sheep Puck. Stick. Yeah, that seems pretty good. And he, he, did he, he, didn't, he didn't go for the Refresher, I believe. Yeah. No. Okay, so. Did buy out, though. So, But he will be able to get the buyback money pretty quickly with that talent. Now, Tusk is actually close to 25, and he didn't even grab his XP talent. Roshan timer did come up. It's going to be 2 minutes from uh, 2 minutes and 5 seconds from this point on. Let's go, team. Be a little bit now, here. Enchantress is not a hero. Like, Enchantress makes sense in the game, but it's not a hero known for late game dominance. I feel like she's no. much more of a mid game for her peak, yeah. although she will still be putting damage out. Now, what is she? Her 25 talents, her level 25 talents seem extremely underwhelming. 8% impetus damage that makes impetus from 22% to 30%. Yeah, that's alright. But it's just still distance traveled. Heroes are going to be much more comfortable playing up, and the nature's attendance heal just seems like a death. Yeah, that, seems that doesn't weird. seem like a real talent to me. No, you're and playing I... against divine rapier gyro. That doesn't you seem way too quickly. Yeah, uh, enchantress is is uh, uh she'll go for the um, MKB. Try to do as much damage as she can. But uh, yeah, mid game was her time to shine. And she did do some good uh, plays during the mid game, but of course, um, after they take took down, they took down the mid racks with the Aegis. After that, they really kind of ran against the wall of this gyrocopter. Mm -hmm. Mostly, I, I think it's this uh, Hearts uh, Scythe of Vice has done so much work in the two team fights they won. In both the team fights they won, they uh, oh, either blew up the Shadow Fiend or the Luna. This is a game of BKBs, and being able to initiate with a with a mute is gonna win you the game. And although Hart has died in these fights, he's won the fights by these uh, doing these insane initiations. Speaking of BKBs, um, there's going to be only six second BKB on uh, Shadow Fiend. There's going to be a eight second on Enchantress and a seven second on Luna. Down. Tusk has his gem, so he's looking for wards. Although there are no wards on his side of the map, just like there are no heroes on his side of the map. Uh, this is the Divine Rapier effect. Someone has it. They'd like yeah. to hold it. They don't like to use it. Everyone gets super scared. They don't want to fight unless they have the Roshan, which is coming up right this second. There we go. Come on, come on, come on. Puck scattered out. And this is going to be where uh, I think the game is probably going to come to a uh, penultimate fight here. Gyrocopter will... I mean, he's not even using his drum. He's got to drop that for the Aegis. Aegis has, then, uh, Roshan has been scouted out by John Hopkins. Now, do they the give Hopkins the card. Refresher Shard to Puck or OD? I think... Hmm, oh my God. I think Double. Puck, probably? They both have, uh, the Scythe of Weiss, but this Puck also has the, uh, Dagon as well. But did they go Sanity Eclipse Multiplier? No, they went for the 20 Strength, yeah. Maybe give it to the Puck. And Double Dagon. Yeah, give it to the Puck. They find the Roshan. Both teams are aware of Roshan. But both so now is the time you don't want to step away too far from this pit. Here's the smoke. Johns Hopkins University. About to run into a Tusk. Not the kill they want, but it might set up the fight they want. Oh, tusk is going to get himself out of there. He sends the shards away. So it's going to be a botched uh, smoke there for now. Bottom lane. Luna Illusions are going to put some damage on a T3. Is this the... 
Oh, that means Gyrocopter's bot. They know Gyrocopter's bot. If they want to oh, fight, Oh, Gyrocopter! He is down. Yeah, then they're going go into a pit. They're committing into a pit where the Gyrocopter making his I mean, way in. Look how fast he moves. Butterfly. 550 movements. Roshan is a 550% health. They're not going to be quick enough. They won't going to be quick enough. The cooldown is coming in. A word of war coming in as well. This is dangerous. It will be the, the world is punched and the kick in the pit. Now the, uh, the Red Swim getting channeled up as well. Same as the Death War over the full duration. There's going to be the Aegis picked up by the Luna. And Luna actually picks up the Refresher Shard. Use a double um, Eclipse. Actually has a second Eclipse unlocked right now. OD goes down. Tusk goes down. But the Divine Repair is a safe for now. Gyrocopter got ripped apart by that Death Ward having it bounced to him. Gyrocopter yeah. did 4,700 damage. Witch Doctor did 5,200 damage. Divine Jeez. Rapier, who needs it? All I need is a Death Ward full duration. All you oh, need Witch is Doctor. support with a, with a 10,000 uh, 10, net worth compared to a 30k net worth Gyro. Yeah. Gyrocopter spent the whole fight attacking Clockwork Cogs, and I think he maybe just got too committed to the Divine Rapier. He might have been able to accomplish more, but he did only escape by this, uh, just barely. Now, uh, T3 goes down. It's already been down earlier, so it doesn't open up shrines. They want to come what in they here. What they want is to take a fight. They have Aegis and they have Eclipse again. They, yeah. There's no buyback, but Gyrocopter is doing a fantastic job clearing waves. Uh, Luna during that fight picked up the cheese, ate the cheese, and picked up the refresher, ate, uh, ate the refresher, and then picked she's up the very hungry. Yeah. Now with a full belly, she's gonna go high. Oh, look at them. It's like they have the rape here. It's like how fast they're crushing these buildings. That's Luna. Oh, and even the missile doesn't even make it there thanks to the glaive bounces. And now that they open back themselves up before the OD comes back up, they're gonna be happy with taking that second racks there. John Hopkins still all three of their racks remaining up. Gyrocopter has the satanic finished up on him as well, so it's gonna be even harder to take him down unless they get the initiation on Gyrocopter, which I don't think is gonna happen easily. Well, game has slowed down a little bit. Again, we're gonna go for top lane though, because with Eclipse and Aegis, mm. this is John Hopkins University. As of time, there's the MKB. Enchantress is just gonna be choked with the Gyrocopter. Yeah, Enchantress is gonna be a huge amount of damage now, actually. And on their elimination game, John Hopkins University is looking like they're gonna take this to a game three. This next fight is gonna decide a lot. Are they really? Fuck, don't get caught out. No! Oh, no, they find him with the rocket flare. Everyone's done it for a little bit longer with the cogs. Now, well committed in as well. Now they're going to get out. There's going to Dream Call and the Fiend Grab. Chell Fiend is getting absolutely eviscerated. Same as the uh, Witch Doctor as well. Now, Luna, the sole survivor. Wasted a clip. He was a clip and goes out immediately. There is the Aegis spot on her as well. Tries to use a big game to get away, but it's not going to be enough. He's going to be taken down by that uh, Divine Rapier of Dark Hopper. Even the Astro Boon is coming in to save the house. And that's going to be a four for non trade there. Jam going over to their side as well. And uh, that eclipse. Ouch. That is not Sand King Alt. It does not uh, continue through death. Double Divine oh, Rapier no. on Gyro. Oh my Conquer. god. Uh, Witch Doctor got his ult off and won them a fight earlier. They were not going to let that happen again. OD had a fantastic save on Tusk. And look at that. Marietta College takes the fight with five heroes alive. Puck getting caught out and fighting on a T2 instead of on your high ground. That doesn't seem like the way you want to start a fight where you go 5 and 0. Oh. But that's what we just saw from Marietta College. They potentially are going to eliminate Johns Hopkins University in the first uh, casted game of uh, this CSL season for Johns Hopkins University. Now Gyrocopter one shot and creeps. Just going to push on top. Here we go. What's he at now? 900 something damage. There's, there's, there's some, there's some damage on him. Go hit this tower. Yeah, 950 down. some damage. Oh, oh my no. god, there's gonna be five shotting these. Oh, they're going to the hurricane fight, but they're going to use a oh, no. no. Oh my god, and now. Was there an enchantress? Enchantress completely destroyed. Yeah, speaking of which doctor also disappears as well. There's gonna be buybacks of uh, force out on those two Black here. is back up again. Yeah, they want to save the buyback on four. these two cores right now. Shell Fiend up in one. Luna still eight seconds to go. They're gonna sacrifice another, um, the rack here if they don't get the they, buyback they have on Luna. To, Luna doesn't want to buy back, they have to give up another lane. Yeah. Now, Actually, Black Hand is going to be able to play safe. Safe there. There's Puck using an ult. Oh, are they backing? Okay, so playing they it are. safe. Playing it very safe. Now they have everything but coil, which is not far off. 
He has a refresher on Puck as well if he really needs uh, to use a coil. Mm -hmm. And they're just going to back. They want their spells. The thing is, Gyrocopter is on a 40 second timer. Every 40 seconds, he kills everything. You yeah. need Flat Cannon to be burned, and that's when you take the fight uh, if you're Johns Hopkins University. This is a problem right now. The lack of kind of um, initiation, like a blink and a hex type of initiation that the other team has with the OD, or like a blink nullifier type of play, because this um, Gyrocopter, I'm not sure if they're taking him down unless they hex him. It's Gyrocopter's game right now, yeah. and he can dictate everything. Johns Hopkins University doesn't have an answer. They have the Enchantress spent 50 minutes building up her build to, to eliminate Gyrocopter, and he just mantas as well as flat cannons and kills her. In kills her in seconds. She has 2,000 life at level 25. She did go for the 25 Nature's Attendance heal. It could be a hundred Nature's Attendance heal for all I care. She dies in three hits to that gyrocopter. He doesn't care one bit about her. He doesn't even care about Untouchable. Not one spell Enchantress has, not one item she has is yet any concern to gyrocopter right now. The only thing this gyrocopter likes is buying swords and hitting jungle creeps. Gyrocopter now going for a Silver Edge here. I love it. Just additional defensive uh, spells there even I would say yeah defensive combat. you definitely argue it gets rid of untouchable but again gyrocopter doesn't care he just attacks something else clockwork yeah. cogs buildings newts luna whatever he hits enchantress is dying um witch doctor seems to be the only way this is going to have anything happen i think witch doctor really needs to get uh level 25 for the death war damage Shelf? pushing by himself oh he has the link that's why but he's oh, there's the catch anyways he was no. by himself, he'll be there, though, no, and he spins as well. Tyga gets a global call down. Now, is this the All perfect bait? I don't know why John Hawkins are constantly doing this. I feel like they just constantly put themselves out here in this top. This this top half the jungle in the Radiant side is where they lost every single of their huge team fights by putting themselves in a weird position by attacking these buildings and giving themselves away and getting initiated on by this OD with the instant tanks. The OD has been doing work with that. I love the OD is almost selfless with it. He knows that the, he could just trade, support in, and just start throwing out the right clicks. Uh, he OD either wins the fight or dies, and wins the fight afterwards. And I like that playstyle. He doesn't try and stay alive. He knows his role. He knows what Gyrocopter is capable of. OD's role is to start a fight and do as much damage as he can, make as much space. He's essentially just taunting people by running at them. And Gyrocopter just gets the impact cannon every 40 seconds. So here we go. Shadow Blade up. There was also a buyback on Shadow Fiend, by the way. So he's Luna is bottom still. They're going for the. Okay. They want Roshan, which is up in 35 seconds. They respawn in 35 seconds. Would not be surprised if we see a fourth Roshan go down. Now, what does Roshan drop on his fourth death? <laughs> I wish it was something special, but I believe it is still the refresher. I've heard to this day no one's ever killed a Roshan before. <laughs> Um, As you 25. constantly keep dropping more and more refreshers. Husk here. went for the 12% walrus punch chance. Uh, I mean, why not, right? With how many BKBs are in this game, you might get lucky sure, and break something. Right. Um, it's a very low chance, 12%. The ice shards cool down, allow you to permanently block a path, but there also are a lot of war stats. Hurricane pipe on Enchantress, on uh, Luna, on Shadow Fiend, on Clockwork is a force staff. Yeah, ice shard duration, I think, is usually uh, a better call. Oh, no, but... there's going to be a catch up or onto the clockwork into the bottom. Bye -bye. That is going Bye -bye. To, that, that's going to be a gem taken uh, over as well. Man. Speaking of this game going long, this Roshan timer is going to be a long one as well. It was about 2 minutes and 30 seconds, and right now, sitting around 2 minutes. Here we go. What's a Roshan looking like? Two, yeah, 2 minutes. Shadow Feed, once again, returning to where he died. There's his Satanic. We'll be taking buyback. Buyback on buy back clockwork. clockwork. What was the buyback for? I guess he was scared that everyone started pushing in. I think he wanted to defend his jungle, which Gyrocopter is now farming. <laughs> so that's going to be um, three buybacks on cooldown for Johns Hopkins. It's going to be Enchantress, who's on three minute cooldown. Uh, Shadowfiend, who's on six, and uh, Clockwork, who just recently bought back. Now, Actually, even the uh, Witch Doctor. Is at uh, three minutes cooldown as well. I was now, Clockwork and Witch Doctor this. still need to make it to 25. How is Tusk is 25 and Bane is not quite? What does Bane get? 
25 brain sap damage heal, and that's pure damage. Yeah, that's a pretty big deal. 500, uh, da 550 damage nuke. Obviously, you could go the seven seconds fiend grip duration. Uh, they haven't really been breaking fiend grip too reliably. No. And there's BKB. I mean, that's just really overkill in my books. Like, are you really going to be casting fiend's grip for yeah. the uh, for that duration? Is that it's absolutely seconds? crazy? If, he, if maybe... you are ever caught by yourself and one v one in Bane, he will kill you. I guess. The thing is, is the, the thing is with that though is it makes it it makes someone commit a spell. You can't yeah. let fiend's grip be ignored in that case. You have to commit at least a spell, and 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 you know potentially that's a clockwork hook shot that could be on a gyro. Potentially, um, you know that's a, a cask that bounces to no one. You know, uh, in this situation, I'm actually kind of sold on this call down global pull This has been pushing out all their lanes, also providing them pretty good vision in this scenario. Smoke. It has. I mean, it's uh, it's no three homing missiles, but it's not it's not terrible. I'll give you. Yeah, that. When it comes to vision advantage, I think that was the biggest thing here, at least uh, from what I'm seeing. Now they're going down in the mid lane with the smoke. The Johns Hopkins, they're playing is somewhat safe. Yuki sticking his head out for a little bit. Are they gonna get a pick? They see the witch doctor. Be I careful. think. Uh oh, oh, this looks uh -oh. real bad. They see the Luna. That will actually commit onto a tusk here. There's the blade mail up to the BKB. It's going to be <laughs> soaking out everything through this uh, uh, that uh, a snowball. Tusk finally gets taken down. Now gyrocopter oh, was caught, but he's gonna be able to force the staff himself out of there. Luna breaks the uh, coil. There's gonna be a refresher. There's gonna be a second uh, usage of that coil. Now. The second broken again, Taiga uh, kills the <laughs> clockwork in the backline thanks to the flat cannon. Now Luna gets hexed again, it hasn't been on the loop for a very long time. Shallow B gets Shallow Fiend's grip right now, he's getting rolled in, it gets Castle Agronomics now. Gyro doesn't want to fight, Gyro's too afraid to go into this fight. Plus, mixes his um, punch there, he's actually pretty tanky, he's going to get taken down. No, that's the second flat cannon. Even for now. Second flat cannon, is he going to go for it? Flat cannon gets locked in, he's coming in. He's saving, he's saving, he's saving it. He's going, he's going to commit. Here, right we, go, here we 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 go. Exactly. Over on to the Luna, Luna taking so Goodbye. much damage. Oh. The bear is surviving. Enchanter gets out of there with an inches and attend this heal. One more attack going down, so they're going to be surviving building, somehow building, through building. that. Taiga now healing himself all the way up to full. Last thing, Megas, Megas, Megas. Enchanter is coming in, Enchanter cancels. Tusk oh, did <sighs> die back here. Now they. They are backing off. They got a lane Arax. That fight. was safe. Roshan is up. Double damage and arcane. Now, I was scared. Gyrocopter popped flat cannon and immediately Clockwork used blade mail. Gyrocopter is put in quite the dilly of a pickle, not wanting to attack, but also really wanting to attack. Yeah. He got a couple auto attacks out and bit backed off. Luna chased them and put him in a dangerous position. He satanic back up, but then he spent literally 40 seconds just watching his team fight. He did throw a cooldown out, but it was it was a three-player uh, three uh, fight from Marietta as Tusk was out of the fight, uh, running back with his buyback. Somehow Marietta had minimal losses, waited out the 40 seconds, and they managed to get another set of flat cannon, and I really like what Gyro did. Instead of going for kills, he waited for everyone to group up on the objective, that's what they wanted from that fight. He hit his BKB and he just took the objectives of flat cannon up. There is no way that Johns Hopkins University could protect the objective without giving their lives. Now Roshan is up. If Johns Hopkins University oh, can hold down, scouting it again. Illusion rune, bottom is an invisibility. Rail starts up on this Roshan. Now, wars get dropped. They see Luna going in there. What has Puck done with his network? Now Puck is queuing up. They're committing right now, but the DKB is getting immediately pop OD, trying to run. I got trying to fight. He actually gets stunned by the hook shot. He's going to start dropping. He dropped the right here. Onto the ground. Buyback is available on Gyrocopter, but he is now back down to normal items. On, Luna. Yeah, they even spread out the um, damage as well on Chantress and Luna, so they're not all in on the hero. They only get the Aegis, Cheese, and, no. and just like that, the game has turned around. Gyrocopter Aegis. fourth on net worth. <laughs> and did they give the Aegis to one person who doesn't have the Divine Rapier? Who, who There's no the... inventory room on this team. That's true, who took the Refresher Shard? Oh, is the Fiend's backpack. Where was the moon shard from Puck? Who did he give it to? Uh, uh, OD, oddly enough. Fair enough. I guess he benefits a lot from attack speed. Uh, so does the guy who hits for 900 damage. Yeah, probably very true. But I guess uh, the guy who hits for 900 damage can only do it every 40 seconds. 
I feel like Johns Hopkins are, are just scared of going top lane ever again. Yeah. So they're just gonna go like <laughs> in the They uh, have the net worth lead, the Divine Raiders. They have the Aegis. They have the Refresher Shard. They have the Cheese on Clockwork. They have a Lotus. Oh, the Puck actually commits into that uh, orb, but it's going to be. Carlo, by the way, if Johns Hopkins wins this game, we're gonna be in this for a very long time. We're going to a game three. Luna. And it looks like Johns Hopkins is popped. There's the Reflects the homing missile. It's going to a dream call committed. Now, Puck taking a huge amount of damage. Base is out for now. Puck, oh, there's gonna be BKB popped as well. Tusk going to go down the first casualty there. Yuki channeling up the death ward yet again. It's going to record commit as well. Now Taiga going oh, without a chance. No, he actually has to pop BKB though. Defensively trying to save himself. Luna just now the hex over to the shadow feet. The shadow feet is getting um, ripped as well. Meanwhile, Luna is trying to take down the base. The shadow feet pops the satanic and starts turning it around into the enemy team. Now Luna focusing base on the going down. Shrine and the shrine Asian is going down. Game three, boys. Game, game three. They're going into it after 17 minutes of this game.